Hello my brothers and sisters of The Order, I'm Celtic Templar, welcome back to The Order, and for this review video, we're actually going to be taking a look at actually a Legacy Arms Templar Axe, like this. This is my newest uh, single-handed axe. I got this for Christmas for my cousin, which my cousin bought it for me, and he actually found a really good weapon, <laughs> I could just say that much. Uh, now, in truth, the overall length is around 25 and 7 eighths inches, as well the blade edge is around uh, 7 and 1 fourth an inch, and as well the spike is 4 inches, while it's also, the entire thing right up here is all made out of uh, 5, 1, 60 high carbon steel, and as well it also weighs around 2 pounds and 7.4 ounces. Now, most of the weight is distributed right in the rear, so it's pretty much like right about here is where the point of balance is. It doesn't exactly give a good explanation where the point of balance is on the information area tablet, where he probably bought this, which my best bet, he probably bought this from uh, Cult of Athena, of which uh, Cult of Athena does have a lot of good weapons, and Legacy Arms is one of them. Which, this is actually a really cool uh, one I do love. Now, a uh, little bit more in detail. This uh, type of weapon, it comes with a arm strap. Now, if none of y'all know why the arm strap is needed, here's the thing. Say, for example, I lose the axe, or if I, it actually then falls out of my hand, guess what? The arm strap is meant there to actually keep it in place. Now, another thing, the axe also does come with these weird studs. Now, uh... Maybe you might wonder, what are these for? Well, for one, it's meant to keep your grip on the thing. However, you can also use this both with one and two hands. In fact, I feel like this is probably perfect with two hands especially. And, in fact, during the Second and Third Crusade, axes were somewhat used by Templar foot soldiers, especially sergeants, for example, mainly to the fact that this was like an icon form to explain which one was the commanding officer. In other words, a Templar sergeant would have actually worn or used this on the battlefield rather than just using his sword. And in fact, it's actually stated that they would have also used maces. However, the axe is a really cool design. Now, uh, these, um, I want to call them, in fact, these are actually thumbtacks, it looks like, because these actually feel like thumbtacks, which are a really good design. However, Whenever I swing this, I do have a slight problem. Uh, it feels like as though some parts of it are going to start digging into my hand. Which I kind of do feel that a couple of times every time I do a couple of swings and such. It feels as though it's pinching in in such and such way. However, you can pretty much get this deal with that just by wearing a glove. So that could probably be uh, usable. Now, uh, it also comes with this cool designed Templar cross, which I love. Now, in truth, actually, I tried to actually see if this thing uh, was uh, fastened in, and actually it is. In fact, it's also uh, somewhat nailed in with uh, two nails on both ends, and as well, it's actually firmly placed in also, which, that is really cool. Now, upon actually uh, using this, I actually was swinging this around a couple of times, and I thought to myself, we also got to do a weapon test on this, and actually, in the weapon test, we actually did try that. In fact, first we try it out with the Gamerson, which, to no one's big surprise, uh, the Gamerson did uh, not stop this weapon. In fact, the blade literally sliced through it. As well, the spike penetrated ferociously into the armor, which, that is really awesome. <laughs> you gotta love that, actually, a good feel of it. Because the pendulum feel of it, it just wanted to go downward. Now, then the next one, we actually then had uh, Mail, which this is a 6mm uh, link Mail, which is riveted. And actually, the axe actually destroyed it 
with both the blade and the spike in. In fact, this was actually really horrifying upon it. And upon review, I could easily tell that this axe could have probably, uh, even when wearing the gambeson though, However, due to the fact of it, the gambeson uh, being there in the first place, the mail was the only thing that was p badly destroyed while the gambeson survived. So, as we can understand, that if I was to use the axe on the gambeson with mail combo, it would only be the mail that would have been damaged, and of which would have left a massive gap. However, though, when we get to the plate armor, this is actually where it gets... Uh, Kind of actually a little incredible, actually, because <laughs> the axe blade made an incredible dent as well a massive scarring on the helmet. This is my casting bayonet, which is 14 gauge steel. And in fact, both the spike and the axe blade have done such a ferocious damage on it that it actually chipped into the helmet so badly that it could have easily uh, killed our w person that would probably have been wearing this helmet. Meaning, if this guy was probably wearing a helmet like this, we know one thing, he might have actually gotten his head uh, especially damaged. Now, especially with the spike end, as soon as it makes an impact charge, what could actually happen is it could easily just kill the person from internal shock and force to the cranial nerve system. So, yeah, in fact, I made at least two strikes just to prove my theory, and yes, it does incredible damage. Both the spike and the blade are incredible. I had to put that out there. This is beyond a weapon I can... <laughs> this is a really good weapon I love. Now, I only used the blade and the spike for this. Uh, I didn't use the other parts, if none of y'all know what the other parts are. Well, uh, this type of axe in general is what they call a, well, spiked axe. In fact, this is known as a crusader spike axe also. However, this axe, in truth, I actually have seen a axe near identical to this, which is being known as the Norwegian or Scandinavian style spiked axe, that which would have been used by uh, Scandinavian people by the high medieval period. However, that model came out slightly later, in which this one has a more, uh, well, I want to call it thicker spike design. In of which, this though is really cool though, still. Now, I can still do cutting blows as we get seen. I can also do hooking, and as well, thrusting with the tip of the blade. And as well, the spike. Now, another way I do like this weapon is that actually it also has this tapering effect. Now, if none of y'all know what this means right here, this weird oblog thing here, this means I have a good control model for a good powerhouse, meaning I can use a lot more power into this strike right down here, especially, and as well, even on cavalry, it was effective. In other words, just imagine your full force coming from this part of the weapon. And that's how dangerous this was. And in truth, actually, this weapon actually does remind me of the historical style of Scandinavian axes. In fact, uh, this is actually one major way you can actually understand the weapon might have been influenced by the Scandinavian style weapons. Especially because of the pommel, or I want to call it the uh, bottom shaft. And of which, it, this, as soon as you see this massive, uh, well, I want to call it a ball, as they, because there are different terms for it. However, uh, I just call it the uh, weighted shaft. And in which, this actually shows that it's of a Scandinavian origin. So, in truth, this is actually what many historians actually believe, that of which would have been used uh, type of axe like this, especially in the Crusades, and mostly in Northern Europe during the High Medieval Period. And in fact, even Robert the Bruce might have used an axe near identical to this at the Battle of Bannockburn. If no one know the story of the Battle of Bannockburn, it's actually stated that Robert the Bruce had, had used an axe somewhat like this. Now, it's stated he had ruined his axe, a perfectly good axe, with that Englishman's ugly face, which you gotta mention, that's actually kind of hilarious. Uh, 
even for me. And now, in truth though, this is really awesome of an axe because you can actually just do perfect swings. And in truth, I do love this thing. Literally, I can just do cuts just non-stop. Now, I was worried though that the blade would have been blunted, but actually it's still got a major edge. Now, word of warning when you buy this, y'all, it comes fully sharpened, literally. This, when it came to me, it was sharpened beyond measure, and so you might want to be careful with the bladed edge, because you do not want to, because literally, I nearly actually cut my own fingers off just by unwrapping it. And actually, when it came in from Cult of Athena, uh, it was packaged up incredibly well, literally. It was just preserved in a massive uh, plastic pack all throughout the entire thing. Literally, it took me like about uh, half an hour just to get this thing out of the plastic. And it was so oiled, it took me forever just to get it, the packaging oil off. So yeah. But still though, this is a pretty incredible axe. In fact, axes like this would have still been used till, uh, I want to say... Pretty much up until the colonial period, and in fact, sometimes these were even known as boarding axes during the naval warfare, which that is horrifying just to the sound of it. Now, I was actually kind of surprised though when it came to the mail of how damaged it became. Because, uh, let me show you here is where the axe went in with a blade, which makes a good penetration, however. In truth, the uh, spike, not so much, actually. In fact, I only made two holes with the spike because I tried twice in order to penetrate it. Not the best, actually, because uh, the spike didn't do that much damage, seeing as though it didn't have a tapering design tip, like the later Norwegian axe, which we could see why. However, the blade, though, it really wrecked the mail so badly that it now has a major hole like right through it so that is horrifying but yeah I got like three holes in this now if no one will understand where this mail comes from this is, comes from the uh, Lords of Battles uh, six millimeter rings which this is only extra that of which I took off from the sleeves which I did not need so yeah you can see of how good that would have been and this incredibly did get damaged, but it still would have actually protected you. Now, mail like this would have actually emerged by the time of the High Medieval Period, or Late High Medieval Period, so, and by into the time of the Late Medieval Period. So, in truth, by the time full plate would have been used. So, if this could easily be damaged by this bad boy, uh, makes you wonder of how much this could have actually held up. So, this entirety of the weaponry, we have to understand that this weapon from Legendary Arms, or Legacy Arms, is incredible. In fact, if y'all want to buy one of these, I will leave links down below, as well to the many groups that actually do sell them. In fact, I know that Cult of Athena does sell them, and as well a couple of others. However, if you want to buy these, be my guest, because these are an incredible crusader type weapon. Now, I also know that uh, Thorian Arms, a uh, group here in Texas, actually does sell these, so I'll also leave links to them as well. Now, another thing I also worried is that the tip of the uh, spike might have broken off, but uh, not fully fine. But yeah, everything part of this was really incredibly uh, fine. Now, I was surprised, though, of how much force I sustained into the armor. And here's the thing, I was only using half of my body weight, or uh, my muscle weight, to launch the axe. And that's saying something. So if I put my full force into it, just imagine what it probably would have happened to the soldier wearing the armor that I had. Now, I want to also probably put out there that if this actually went through plate armor, uh, no. Uh, as I said before, plate armor can easily deflect weaponry blows depending on the plate. So, yeah. However, the force of the weapon could probably still be felt underneath that plate. So, yeah. Still, though, this is probably an incredible weapon for self-defense, especially. 
because if none of you understand, you can easily just tuck it in your belt and pull it out and use it, which that's really cool. Now, as I said, you could probably use this with two hands if you want, because honestly, I don't care if you all want it, we'll use it with two hands or one, but still, this is an incredible dangerous weapon, and if none of you understand of how dangerous weapons like this were, here's the thing, in medieval crusades, most of the time, they used an axe rather than a mace. So, this is technically one of them. And in truth, the mace or uh, axes like these actually started to come around during this time period and during the high medieval period and started to look more like this, which we could see why. In which, when plate armor was starting to evolve, in other words, when you're fighting on the battlefield, you normally want to keep using weaponry, that of which to peak efficiency. However, it's actually stated that when it came to fighting, the blade was mostly used, and the spike was a finishing blow. In other words, as soon as he's down on the ground and his helmet and such, he's trying to get it off, guess what? You're going to come up behind him and just finish him. Yikes, that is that's horrifying. But yeah, if y'all want to buy these, be my guest. If you want more information, I will leave links down below, as well more information down below. As well, also check out our Facebook, like and subscribe to actually help the channel grow. And hopefully we can reach a thousand uh, subs very soon because I actually have a couple of series I want to put out there very soon. Anyways guys, this has been Templar. Hopefully see y'all all in the next one. And have a great day, y'all. Mm -hmm.